So one case that you might get in exam is ankylosing spondylitis. Now there are few special tests that you are expected to know when you appear for the exam. The first is occiput to wall test. So for this you have to stand, you have to make the patient stand against the wall like this. The heel should be touching the wall, the buttock should be touching the wall and the patient should try to stand uh, close to the wall as close as possible. Now the important thing here is the occiput should be touching the wall. If the patient is not able to make the occiput touch the wall, that means the thoracic kyphosis is, has increased and there is a forward stoop or a bend. So if the patient is not able to make his occiput touch the wall, then that is a positive sign. However, this is not a diagnostic test, test for ankylosing spondylitis because a lot of patients are not able to do so. But if the distance is more than 10 centimeters, then it is definitely confirmative. The second test is Tragus to wall test. In this, we ask the patient to stand like this. We measure the distance from the distance of tragus from the wall and we do it on both the sides. We do it on both the sides, then we take the average of it and it should be less than 10 centimeters. If it is more than 10 centimeters, then it is confirmative. The third test for ankylosing spondylitis is we measure the chest expansion at the level of nipples. So we ask the patient to hold it and we go around the entire circumference and then we ask the patient to fully inhale from a fully exhaled position. So when we do this, the minimum chest expansion should be 5 centimeters. Normally, if it is more than 5 centimeters, it is for a normal individual. So for a normal individual, it can be 5 to 8 centimeters. However, in cases of restricted pulmonary disease or some other pathology, it can be between 2 to 5 centimeters. So between 2 to 5 centimeters, it may be suggestive of ankylosing spondylitis. But if it is less than 2 centimeters, then it is definitely suggestive of ankylosing spondylitis. Now, moving on to the third special test. The third uh, special test is, we ask the patient to repeatedly bend forward, get up and do the rotations. If while doing this, supposing if you ask the patient to do this for 2 minutes. बार बार करो जल्दी जल्दी करो बार बार हां गुड अब ऐसे दूसरी तरफ रोटेट होना है ऐसे ऐसे करो हां ऐसे ऐसे सो यू आस्क द पेशेंट टू डू दिस मैनेवर फॉर 2 मिनट्स इफ आफ्टर 2 मिनट पेशेंट सेज दैट ही इज एक्चुअली फीलिंग देयर इज अ देयर इज मोर फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी इन हिज बॉडी एंड ही इज फीलिंग बेटर देन दिस टेस्ट इज नोन एज द स्ट्रेस टेस्ट इन दिस बेसिकली व्हेन द पेशेंट मूव्स the movement improves, the flexibility increases, the patient go, the pain goes down. So the patient starts feeling better. This is based on the same principle that in an ankylosing spondylitis patient, when he gets up in the morning, he is stiff, but when he moves around, he becomes better. So that is because the movement increases the flexibility, reduces pain and increases the uh, movement, overall movement of the body. So the next Next test now is the Schober's test. For this, we ask the patient, yeah, we ask the patient to stand like this. Then we mark both the dimple of venous and we join them through a line. This marks the lumbosacral junction. Now, using the scale. We take a point which is 10 centimeters above this line and then we ask the patient to bend forward. Now as you can see here, this distance has increased. Now normally this distance should at least increase by 5 centimeters. So this is known as Schober's test. A modification of this test is when we take a line which is 5 centimeters 
below lumbosacral junction. So when we mark this line which is 5 centimeters below and we measure the flexibility increase during this entire length of 15 centimeters, this is known as Schober's test. Now as you can see here, the distance has increased tremendously to over 8 centimeters. So, so in this case, important thing to remember here is whether you do Schober's test or modified Schober test, the result is that minimum 5 centimeter increase in the length should be there. In a normal individual, this is almost close to 6 to 8 centimeters. In case of ankylosing spondylitis, because the flexibility goes down, this distance may very well be less than 5 centimeters. So, this is how Schober's and modified Schober tests are done in exam and how it is interpreted. Now, in ankylosing spondylitis, we definitely need to do special tests for sacroiliac joints. We have a separate video on sacroiliac joint special test. You can go through that video. In that, we have demonstrated Gans lens pump, uh, pump handle test, compression test, distraction test, Faber's test. So, all the special tests for sacroiliac joints are demonstrated in that particular video. Thank you.